Hello and welcome to episode three of Biology Explained with me, Mr. Hill. Today's episode is going to be focusing on DNA and protein synthesis. Now in the SQA National 5 course here in Scotland, that is unit one key area three, uh, but it is applicable to anybody studying at around the GCSE level, levels 14 to 16, wherever you are in the world. Now, if you do like this video, please subscribe. It helps me out loads, but it also helps you out because then you never miss a future episode. Also, please do like and share this video amongst your friends so that everyone can improve their confidence in biology. So we're going to begin by looking at where DNA is found within a cell before looking at DNA structure and then finally how proteins are synthesized. So let's make a start. OK, so welcome to the first part of today's episode where we're going to be looking at where DNA is found within a cell. Now, DNA is an essential part of life. It codes for proteins, which make up all of our cells, tissues, organs, and ultimately make up the features uh, of us as organisms. Um, so it's extremely important that we understand how they work, uh, but also where they're found within a cell. So as you can see on the screen, we're going to begin with our trusty animal cell uh, fried egg sort of model. And you can see the purple blob in the middle is, of course, our nucleus, which is the site of genetic material. We've established that in our first episode. Now, within the nucleus, you can see I've got uh, a few long sort of purple sort of snake-like structures here. And uh, these are long linear chains of DNA. Now, in eukaryotic cells, that is animal and plant cells, DNA is arranged in a long linear chain, so a straight chain, not in loops. In bacteria, it's organized in loops. But in animal and plant cells, they are long chains, and we call those chromosomes. Now, the number of chromosomes in each nucleus depends upon the species of the cell. So in humans, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, so 46 in total, 23 inherited from the sperm that made you and 23 from the egg that made you. But other species have different numbers. Now, the chromosome itself is uh, made up of short individual sequences, and we call those short individual sequences genes. And each discrete gene codes for a certain protein. And uh, you can see on the example I have on the screen here that I've colored in three genes on the chromosome. So this is a gene, okay? This is a gene, and the one in the middle is also a gene. And they'll be coding for different proteins, which may or may not work together. Uh, and ultimately, uh, these individual sequences are, are, are what's going to control what that protein looks like and how it functions. OK, so just to summarize that, we have our animal cell in this example. It could be a plant cell. In that, you have your nucleus, which within the nucleus, you contain a linear straight line chains of DNA known as chromosomes. And on each chromosome, we have a set of genes, which are a discrete short sequence of DNA. Now, the DNA itself is a polymer, meaning it is a long chain of repeated units. And that polymer is known, of course, as DNA. And it is shaped as a double helix. So you can see at the bottom of the screen here, we have our DNA. Okay. And it is shaped as a double helix. Okay, or double-stranded helix. Sometimes it's written as that. Uh, and it's like a twisted ladder. And uh, the, um, the, the individual rungs of the ladder correspond to different bases. Okay, so the rungs of the ladder are equal to different bases. And there are four different bases that exist in DNA. And they bind in certain ways to each other to ensure that the sequence is copied correctly during the production of new DNA, but also when it's used to make proteins. And that is what we're going to be looking at in the next part of this episode. So in our last section, we looked at how DNA is arranged within a cell and we looked at how DNA is shaped as a twisted ladder, a double helix structure. Before we have a look at how the bases um, bind and how DNA uh, is sequenced, let's have a look at the individual units of that DNA uh, molecule. So you can see on the side here, I've got our double helix again, and we know that DNA is a polymer, meaning a long chain of repeated sequences. And each of the individual ladders rungs here represents a monomer of the DNA, and that monomer is known as a nucleotide. Now, the nucleotide is made up of three different components. The first component 
is this five-pointed uh, pentagon shape here, and that is a pentose sugar. Okay, now it's ribose. That's where DNA gets a part of its name from, deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay, so ribose is the sugar. Um, and bound to that is a small phosphate group. And the phosphate group is going to then bind to another pentose. Okay, so if we were to build our next piece of nucleotide there, uh, there'll be another pentose there. Likewise, there'll be another phosphate group just there. Okay, that forms, if you like, the, the sort of long uh, sort of supports, if you like, of our ladder um, uh, that run between each of the different bases. Now, the red thing we have on the side here is our uh, nitrogenous base. So we just call it a base. That's absolutely fine. And this is the rung of the ladder. So you see I've got three different colored, or sorry, four different colored um, rungs here. They are the bases, and they bind to the sugar backbone here. Uh, this is a red one, but it could easily be a blue, a yellow, or a green. And it's the sequence of these different bases that determines what the DNA codes for, okay, what the gene will ultimately code for. And that is going to be the focus of our next section of this episode. So now that we've established the structure of DNA, we need to look at now how those different bases bind together. Now, as you can see on the screen here, I have uh, unraveled and untwisted our double helix to make a straight line. And you can see that I have four different letters on show. Each of these letters represents a different base, which makes up the nucleotide we looked at in the last section. Now, there are only four types of bases in DNA. They are A, T, C, and G. And they only ever bind to one other type of base. And as you can see, A always binds to T, and C always binds to G. Now, this is really important because it ensures that the sequence of the uh, gene is uh, less likely to be copied incorrectly when DNA is copied or when mRNA is made, which we'll look at in the next step. This is known as complementary base pairing. Now, for your national fives, not only do you need to know the letters and how they complementary bind to each other, you also need to know the names of the molecules themselves. So let's go ahead and label up our diagram with those names. So A stands for adenine, and adenine always binds to thymine. C stands for cytosine, and cytosine always binds to guanine. So for example, if our gene was this sequence here in black, very short gene here, what would be the complementary base to that? Well, A always binds to T and C always binds to G. So the complementary sequence must be T, A, C, C, G, C, T, and A. So now that we've studied the structure of DNA and where it's found, we're going to put this all together to be looking now at how proteins are coded for and how they're made in the cell. Now, this is an extremely important process because without proteins, cells won't function pro properly. And without functioning cells, organisms like you and me simply will not exist. Now, an individual gene codes for an individual protein. And so when you want to make this protein, you need to get that sequence of gene out of the nucleus and go to the ribosome, where we know from the first episode is the site of protein synthesis. So in this box here, I have drawn our, our DNA molecule here, and I've unzipped it, so only one section of it is exposed. The nucleus is going to construct a complementary strand to this gene. And this is this short sequence, this complementary sequence, that is going to leave the nucleus and go to the ribosome. Now we call this a messenger RNA, or mRNA for short. The M stands for messenger. That gives you a clue as to what its job is. Its job is to go from the nucleus to the ribosome. Now, a few facts about mRNA. mRNA is a single strand. It's short, so it's only the gene that's coded for that's going to be making the proteins that's actually copied. And although this is beyond National 5, you don't need to remember this for your National 5 qualifications, but the base T is replaced 
by base U. U stands for Eurosol. Just in case you ever see any literature out there where you've got your bases, you might wonder what's a U? Well, the U is in place of a T when it comes to RNA here. So that's our first step then. Our first step in making proteins is that a gene is unraveled and a short sequence of mRNA is copied. That's complementary and it then is ready to leave the nucleus. So part two then in this process, we have our mRNA molecule here. It's going to leave the nucleus and it's going to go to the ribosome. Nice and simple. Part three, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. The mRNA molecule is going to be read by the ribosome in order to build a protein. Now, on the, in this box, I'm going to draw the mRNA and I'm going to cluster our bases in groups of three. I'm exaggerating the distances slightly here, but it helps to visualize what's happening. So our mRNA then is clustered into groups of three bases. Each group of three is known as a codon. The ribosome is going to read each codon, and each codon is going to be uh, representing a different amino acid. Now, an amino acid is an individual unit of a protein. So, for example, this three bases here might correspond to a yellow amino acid in this model. The next three might correspond to a green amino acid. The next one here might be a blue, it might be a blue square this time. The next three might be that yellow circle again, might be the same sequence. And then finally, we might have a purple square. Each of these amino acids are then joined together at the ribosome and you have yourself a protein. So each individual section here is an amino acid. And the whole chain of amino acids is a protein. Okay, so there you have it then, the three steps of protein synthesis. Step one, our DNA for our gene is unraveled and a short complementary sequence of mRNA is made. Step two, this mRNA leaves the nucleus and heads to the nearest ribosome. Step three, the ribosome reads the mRNA in triplet base codons, with each codon representing a different amino acid. And those amino acids are bound together to make your protein. So as always, to wrap up today's episode, we have a past paper question, and this time it comes from the paper from 2017, and it's question three from section two. Um, it's four marks available, covering a little bit of ground from all the different parts of today's episode. So why don't you pause the video, have a go at answering this question, and when you're ready, you can come back and we'll go through the answers. Okay, so let's have a look now at the answers to this question. So question 3A is going to give you a little bit of uh, context. So forensic scientists can take small quantities of DNA and uh, using the process, they can make a large quantity. Each DNA molecule is separated and used to make two complementary strands as shown below. So you've got the solid line here representing the original DNA strand, and then you've got the dotted line here representing the complementary strand. All you have to do for question 3A is to give the full names of bases one and two. And that means you have to give the full name, not the letters. If you just give the letters, you won't get the mark. So G, we know binds to C, so that must be cytosine. And A always binds to T, so that one must be thiamine. Now, you've got to be really careful with your spelling here, okay? Thiamine, T-H-Y, okay? The reason being there are other biological molecules out there, such as thiamine, uh, which have a slightly different spelling. Uh, so if you spell this incorrectly, we don't know which one you really mean. So it's very important that your bases are spelt correctly. Right, 3B. The bases in a strand of DNA make up the code for the production of proteins. The DNA for every individual person varies. Describe the way in which this code differs from person to person. So the way it's different between each individual person is its sequence. So the sequence of bases or the order of bases is what's going to get you the mark. Now, of course, 
for a lot of proteins that are essential to life, uh, the sequences are not that different at all between people because they're so important. But there is variation in the sequences of other proteins, and that's what makes us all unique. Finally, question 3C, name the single-stranded molecule which carries a complementary code, copy of the code from the DNA in the nucleus to the ribosome for protein synthesis. Well, that is mRNA. So mRNA is your answer. If you say messenger RNA, you'll still get a mark. If you use a capital M, you will still get the mark, but it's not the convention. So do get into the habit of writing a small mRNA. So there we have it. We've covered quite a lot of ground today. We've covered how DNA is structured, where it's found in the cell, and of course, how proteins are synthesized. Now, there's quite a lot of key words in this topic, ranging from codons, amino acids, all the way down to nucleotide. So it is important that you secure your understanding with those words, perhaps by replaying the video or by making yourself a little glossary so that you're confident in using these words in your answers. Also, please be aware that when you're naming the nucleotide bases, that you're correct with your spelling, because there are many biological um, molecules around that look a little bit like the spelling of, say, cytosine or thymine, so it's important you get them correct so we know and the examiner knows what it is that you are writing. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, so please do uh, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and do share this amongst your friends, and tune in next time where we'll be looking at proteins and enzymes. Take care now. Bye-bye.